Welcome back everyone to CIS 165 JavaScript Programming with Victor Campos. Today we're going to be talking about Lesson 3. So once again, uh, at this point, I assume you've already read the book, and it's a long chapter actually. So we're going to have two weeks to work on this homework assignment. So make sure you read Chapter 3 completely and understand it, then watch this video. So I'm going to set up a brand new Lesson 3 folder as always. I'm going to copy over my Lesson 0 basic file and I'll give it the name uh, Lesson 3 Practice. I'll open Visual Code and I'll set myself up for my new project. So I'll close my old project and I'll open the folder for the new project. We should be getting used to this by now. I'm opening up the Lesson 3 practice file and then I'm going to add my comment block at the bottom, the author block. So always remember to name this so that I can give you your grade. This project will be based on functions, methods, and objects. We will create objects store them in arrays and retrieve them randomly. Again, this will be due in two weeks, which should be September 26th. Our title, Chapter 3 Practice. And as for the heading 1, this will be a random album from my collection taking a quick look just to make sure it's on track in the web browser and I'm going to open up my developer tools alright so the big idea with chapter 3 is that we talk again but in much more detail about objects JavaScript is an object oriented programming language so chapter 3 really goes on about it and talking about creating objects via literal notation or object constructor notation. So we're going to focus on object constructor notation because it allows us to create many objects pretty quickly. And then we're going to introduce arrays into the mix and uh, random numbers, the math object of JavaScript. Before we go too much further, let's do something fun because we've been having pretty boring black and white text in our project so far. So let's write a little bit of CSS to style this heading one. So CSS is its own language to learn and for the moment here's what we'll do. So this time in our style block, line 8, we're going to say h1 space curly brace and I'm going to break those curly braces into two lines. What I'm saying here, H1, is I'm going to select. So this is a CSS selector. I'm going to select any instance of heading 1 that exists in my body. And you see when I highlight heading 1 in the CSS block, it highlights it in the body block. I'm going to select it so that I can affect it. And what I can do with CSS is pretty... Uh, pretty cool. I have a lot of things that I can do. So I can, for example, edit the color property of heading 1. This is going to be very familiar uh, based on what we're going to talk about with JavaScript objects because JavaScript objects have properties and values or keys and values. And CSS also has properties and values. This is the color property of the heading 1 object, so to speak, and I'm setting its value to pink. So what that does is, if I save that and check my browser, it made my text pink. Now I can, of course, put in any, any color that I want here. I have 140 names to choose from, and I can also mix color formulas. It's getting out of our scope for the moment. You can go look this up for all possible color names and formulas and such over at w3schools.com and again I would check out w3schools.com anyway to further learn about CSS JavaScript or HTML So I'm gonna say check w3 
schools.com for more CSS and HTML info. All right, so what I've done is I've changed the text color property of heading 1. Next, I will change the background color property. Let's say brown. What happens there then is a brown background. So I'm giving myself some interesting color. This is what CSS does in short. And we're going to focus more on JavaScript, but we will be touching upon CSS and HTML here and there. It might look nice if the text wasn't so bumped up against the edge of the color. So there is a property of that object, the H1 object. The property is padding. And the value, I can say, let's say 5 pixels. Give me 5 pixels of breathing room between the text and the edge of the color. I can, of course, put any value I want there. So now, looking a little nice. Next, I will um, add this effect of border dash radius. We've got the border radius property, and I can give this a value of 25px. Notice I'm ending each line with a semicolon. Uh, re very reminiscent of JavaScript, isn't it? My result is then I get some nice rounded corners on that box. If I have my browser spread out or maximized like this, well, the text is kind of leaning to the left. I want it in the center of that element, that background color. So I can add another property, and this one is the text-align property, and say center. So it doesn't have to be just numbers. It can be strings, of course. So this will align the text into my heading 1 element. You don't notice it too much on the size of my screen here, but you saw that it works. So that'll be enough for the moment of CSS. You can play with these concepts. Just about any tag can be selected and styled in this and many other ways. Go check out W3Schools for more info. Okay, so the concept is we're going to build sort of a database of some of our favorite albums, and then we're going to retrieve an album randomly when the person visits the site. Now, it's not going to be a true database yet. That'll, be, that'll come later. But the concepts that are covered in Chapter 3 will allow us to create groups of data, which is basically a database. So uh, right below this heading, I want it then to display a random album. I need to then create a placeholder element. So into the body block, line 20, I'm going to create a div. A div is just an empty container. And I need to give this, or I should give this, some unique identifier so that I can refer to it via JavaScript. In Chapter 5, we get really deep into document object model manipulation, DOM manipulation. That is, manipulating the elements that exist in the HTML document. But for the moment, as we've seen before and as we'll see today, if we name a div or any object with an ID, a unique identifier, we can control it with JavaScript. So I'll call this Show Albums. It can be called anything I want, of course. And I'm using camel caps here. Uh, so that I can read the word. The book introduces us to using the immediately invoked function expression, iffy, I-I-F-E, iffy. And we're going to start using the iffy because it will, it will give us a lot of great features such as uh, the ability to avoid, to avoid variable naming conflicts and other things. And I'm going to introduce something that the book doesn't just yet but it'll be very valuable as time goes on. So, on to our JavaScript, line 23. And the iffy is written like this. Open, close parentheses, semicolon, because it's a complete statement. In the parentheses, we'll, write, we'll then write function. Open, close parentheses there. And then open, close curly braces. 
This is a function that will be immediately invoked, and as you read the book, you'll see all the benefits of why we want to do this. And most of the time, you'll be seeing this idiom over and over and over in many tutorials as you expand your knowledge of JavaScript. Well, all the JavaScript we're going to write from now on is going to be inside of an iffy. It's going to be inside the curly braces of this anonymous function. So I'm going to break that function, that anonymous function, and I've, and I've got line 24. That's right out of the book. What's not in the book is that we're going to start to use strict mode in JavaScript. We've been using basically loose mode in JavaScript, which allowed us to do some commands not the most correct way, but they worked. But we should focus on the most correct commands and write our code uh, in the most um, standards compliant way. So we will activate strict mode in our JavaScript because then this will help us debug our code. This will give us more errors and errors are good because they help us figure out problems, syntax errors, logic errors, and so forth. So to activate uh, strict mode, pretty easy. Uh, the first line in our JavaScript code uh, inside the iffy will be open close quotes, semicolon, and in the quotes we'll write use strict, lowercase, two words, and that activates strict mode. So now when we run our code in uh, in, in the browser, it can give us m better feedback. If I were to run this in the browser, nothing interesting happens yet. It doesn't give us any feedback at all in the console yet, but um, this is what we want to do from now on using the iffy and using strict mode. Next line. Using constructor notation, we are going to create an object which will store an album. An album is made up of various properties and values. So we've heard that before back on chapter or uh, lesson zero. Okay, so I'm going to create an object based on constructor notation. The syntax is function, some name of an object, and the book says if we create objects in this method, it's best practice or it's common practice to capitalize the name of the object at this point. This differentiates it from any other plain old function or variables and such. Open close parentheses, space, open close curly brace, semicolon. This is the syntax to create an object. I'm going to separate those curly braces into multiple lines. And so what I'm doing here is I'm creating an object and I want to give it a few properties. So I specify some parameters at the moment that I create the function here. I will have the parameter of group, the name of the group, comma, album name, the name of the album, comma, year, the year of the album, and comma, genre, the genre or style of music of the album. This will allow me then to create many objects with these parameters. These parameters basically are getting passed into the object so that then we can use them as properties and add values. We saw in the book that we want to use the this keyword dot group. We're saying the object has a key or property of group and we're talking about this function and it's based on whatever group parameter we pass into the object semicolon this dot album name equals album name this dot year you should get the point this dot genre so now we are creating properties based on what the user tells us these items are. We're also going to set up a method. We need to calculate something here. So a method would be the best idea to use. This dot released. 
we're going to say that a calculation will be accomplished here about uh, when the album was released to tell us uh, how long the album has been out equals this will be a function when it's a function inside of an object it's a method open close parentheses space open close curly brace and I will break those curly braces within this anonymous function within this method of this object I will then create a local variable called cur year obj this is current year object equals we will assign then a new date object the book goes on to explain what the date object is but basically it stores all of the properties and values of what the current date is so we've put that into this variable the current year object is made out of the hour the minute the second the millisecond the day the month the year all stored in this object another variable we'll call this year offset because I want to figure out based on the album that the person saves how many years have passed since it's released that will be whatever cur year object is dot get full year method the date object has a variety of built-in methods one is get me the full year so the four digits get me the four digits of the current year so the cur year object is storing a lot of data and one is the year so I'm saying okay get me that year because then we're going to subtract that from this dot year and this dot year means what was the year that the user supplied when they saved the album this means the year property of this object album end of line and then that will that method will return year offset semicolon so if we use or invoke or run the released uh, method of the album object it'll do a calculation which tells us how many years have passed since the release of that album I'm gonna take a quick look at my browser to see if I've got any errors so far it's a good idea to check your code once in a while uh, so that it doesn't build up too much with too many errors and I've got here uncaught syntax error ex unexpected token semicolon line 32 let's go check out what's going on on line 32 whoops I must have accidentally some reason deleted year so okay there we go I'm gonna put it back in run my code again no errors okay so this is sort of like a template to create album objects just like there is a built-in primordial date object where we can create new instances of the date object now we can create new instances of the album object it was a force of habit but I wrote a semicolon here which comes at the end of the line of function album it's not necessary we should actually uh, avoid uh, semicolons at the end of curly braces so this shouldn't have caused a problem notice I didn't get any error from my browser even though I'm in strict mode so if you never added this that's fine if you take it out like I'm about to that's fine if you don't take it out it should work okay but okay I'm gonna take that back next line now that I've got a template to create these objects I will create an object var I'll call this ALB1 album1 equals new instance of album object well I need to pass it various arguments and the book mentions that there's a difference between arguments and parameters parameters are 
the names of these variables, so to speak, that you use when you create the function or object. And then they become known as arguments when you actually use them in an expression. Subtle difference, and people often uh, use them interchangeably. But now I need to give this uh, arguments. So it expects group, album name, year, and genre. So let's say first I'm going to put in the album, uh, the group Nirvana, in quotes because it's a string, comma. Uh, the album name in question, in quotes, is Nevermind, comma. It was released in 1991, so I'll put it as a number, not as a quoted string, as a number, comma. And it's genre grunge. To see this result, I'll give myself some console output and say, show me the object album or alb1. Alright, so I'll save my code and I'll go to my browser and refresh. Ah, nothing happens. Well, what's going on is um, our immediately invoked function hasn't been invoked. If you wrote exactly what I wrote, we're missing a little piece here. One more pair of empty parentheses. So the syntax for this is very peculiar. But I'm showing you here that it needs to be written in this specific way for it to fully function, to give us all the benefits. So I'm going to save that. Now I'll run it. There's my result. Now the function has been invoked. All of the code inside of that anonymous function now runs. Even though it's all valid code, it doesn't run until I put those two final parentheses. So just for you to see how it's set up, it's kind of weird. It's a couple of parentheses like this, and then function with its own parentheses and curly braces. So that line right there is basically what we've got all up here. I'm going to take that back and get back to my code. So the result was my console then displays, I've got an album object, group, album name, year, genre, etc. So the point of this is that I can use album as a sort of template to create multiple album objects. So I'll create a couple more. I'll reuse this var here so actually uh, before the end of my statement on line 36, delete that semicolon and add a comma so that then we can borrow the var keyword. Alb2 equals new album, open close parentheses, semicolon there. So another um, group, this will be Ramones. The album in question will be Ramones, their first album. And the year of release of that was 1976. And its genre was punk. I'm going to save that. And if I do console log alb2, it should display then the second album object I've created. There we go. Well, what I want to do is, I, as I create these albums, I want to then store them in an array so that I can access them a little bit easier. I'll create one more album object and then start storing them in arrays. So, next line, 38, alb3, new album, with my syntax. This time we'll say Jimi Hendrix, album, are you experienced, year 1967, and genre rock. So that should work. I'll have it display item three, album three, so I'll save that and run it. Ooh, I get an error. So, alb3 is not defined on line 38. What do you mean? I just defined it right there. 
Well, watch this. I'm going to take out, or I'm going to comment out the use strict line, 24. And I'm going to run my code again. No error. That's because we were in loose mode. And I've activated strict mode. In strict mode, technically, I did not create alb3 because I terminated the var keyword on line 37. So there was no var keyword to create alb3, and therefore I got an error. So here then I'm showing you the value of strict mode, because then that should be that I have a comma at the end of line 37. So I'll put strict mode back on, comma at the end of line 37, run that, and it works. Okay, so I've created three albums so far. I want to start storing them in an array. An array can be a very, very basic type of database. A database is some sort of object or construct that holds a group of data. Well, these albs are objects full of data. And I want to store all three of them in, a, in an array so that then I can retrieve them easily. After my console output there, I'll create a new variable call it album collection equals square brackets semicolon square brackets as we've seen before are arrays and we've used arrays before basically here we'll use them a little bit more advanced because what I'm going to put into the array is alb1 comma alb2 comma alb3 I'm putting in objects into my array. I'm not limited to simply uh, strings, numbers, and the like. I'm also able to put in whole objects. I'll do a little quick console output. So on line 41, I'm displaying what is the album collection array holding. And it shows here three albums. If I further open that up, okay, index 0, 1, and 2, index 0, Nirvana, index 1, Ramones, index 2, Jimi Hendrix. It's an array where each key or property is an index number starting from 0, and each value is a whole object with a bunch of data inside of it and a method. So if I wanted to display one item from that array, console.log, album collection, square bracket notation to then say my third album, 0, 1, 2, my third album, display that in the console. There we go, the third album, the third object. So I've started to build objects, save them to an array, starting to retrieve them to the console. Well, we want to show them on screen. And we've got that placeholder on line 20, that div. So we need to create a variable to store a reference to that object in the body. Line 43, we'll say var. L album is the element that will display the album equals document dot so the document object dot get element the get element by ID method this should make more sense now that we've read the book that there is the document object which defines the whole um, website we're looking at and we're using a method to then get an element by its ID so in the parentheses in quotes it will be the element show albums we're storing a reference to that object in the shorthand L album before we get advanced with the random numbers uh, let's say that I want to display one of the albums completely on screen. So we have the L album object dot inner HTML property. 
This is a quick way to add um, text and HTML to an element. Syntax is then we say equals. And then here we can write any valid HTML or JavaScript. So we'll say in quotes, because this is a string, the album space at the end of that plus album collection object we're gonna say the the zero width item dot album name let's display what's the album name of the zero width item in the array so it's the album never mind if we then say okay the third item which is index 2 then it's are you experienced so we're starting to build a string here to display all of this data that we've saved in the album object. As we're seeing here, it shows the album, are you experienced? Well, I want to put that in quotes, and I also want to display the, the group name and the year of release, all that good stuff. So we're going to continue to build our string here. Uh, I want to back up to these double quotes here. I've got the album are you experienced? I want it in quotes. So before I end that double quote, I'll put a single quote there. So be careful here. This is a single quote. If you put a double quote, you've suddenly ended the previous quote, and it's going to get pretty weird. So that's a single quote. I'm going to delete that semicolon because we're adding more. So more concatenation plus quotes single quote space. What that does is it says now the album quotes are you experienced quote by and I want to say the name of the band here so by space and then at the end add album collection we're still talking about the second item this time the group semicolon the album are you experienced by Jimi Hendrix I want to say it's date and genre and all of that so continuing I'm gonna leave the semicolon there this time because I need it for the end but I will add more to this string quotes comma was released so we've got the album X by X was released on X so space on that plus we've got album collection still dealing with the second item dot released method so this one's a method. Uh, I want to display how long ago was the album released. The album, Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix, was released 49 years ago. Wow, 49 years. So what's happening there is, if you recall, released method is a calculation where we take the current year, 2016, and subtract it by the original year of release, which when we created the Are You Experienced object it was 1967 so if we do the Ramones album which was index 1 and the Ramones group and the Ramones year the album Ramones by Ramones was released 40 years ago 1976 to 2016 okay we still got more data that we can display so uh, also our sentence isn't quite fully formed so add a little bit more in quotes we're gonna say was released X years ago in whatever year it was so space that plus that album collection one dot year the album Ramones by Ramones was released 40 years ago in 1976 I'm going to say here the Ramones so I can easily go back then to my object 
where I created that object, that instance of that object, I'll say The Ramones. The album Ramones by The Ramones was released 40 years ago in 1976. At the end of that line, we'll add some more. And then we'll state the genre. So another string, a dot there, because I'm finished with that sentence and I want to start a new sentence. The genre, uh, the genre is space plus, you should get the idea, album collection first index dot genre. And we'll wrap it up knowing that there'll be a dot at the end there. So we finish with a dot a period, run that. The album Ramones by the Ramones was released 40 years ago in 1976. The genre is punk. So if we want then the second item in the array, these values then would be two all across the board. We'll have of course a better way to do this but for the moment I need to change them all to two and don't forget to change all of those to two or else your data will be totally off. And now we've got the album Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix was released 49 years ago in 1967. The genre is rock. Well I've got three albums to choose from and I want the album to be chosen at random and displayed at random when the user visits the site. So here's where we'll, be, where we'll be introducing random numbers based on the math object built into JavaScript. So what I want to do is, after our current line, we're going to set up a random number. So var, rando, random number, my random number, we could call it whatever we want, I'm calling it rando. Var rando is math dot random so it's the math object and the random method if we display this random number unless you read the book you'll be surprised to see that it's going to be a random number from 0 to 1 Well, I want it to be whole numbers, and I want it to be based on the total number of albums we have saved in the array. So the trick here is, we're creating this random number, but then we have to bind it by the maximum number of items in the array. So before the end of the statement, we will then say asterisk, which is the multiplication symbol, shift 8, album collection object dot length. The array has a property of length. How many items are there in the array? So random number times length should give us now a number between 0 and 3. We have 3 items in the array. Well we're getting there. We still have fractional numbers 2.8 0 0.3, 1.7. So these fractional random numbers are going to work because there's no such thing as index 2.5. There's either index 2 or index 3. So we need to round this. We can round up or we can round down. But if you think about it, we need to round down because our array has items 0, 1, and 2. So if we actually get the number 3, at the moment, there is no index 3 in our array. There's a maximum of 2. So whatever number we get, we need to round it down. So 2.5 rounds down to 2. 1.8 rounds down to 1. 0 0.24 rounds down to 0. All right, so that's another method of the math object. What we need to do is take whatever resulted here and round it down. So what I like to do is first I'll wrap, I'll wrap the parentheses around that operation there, that expression, and then back up math 
dot round. This is going to round a number. So if I had put math dot round 1.7, it would round it up to 2. If I put math dot round 1.444, it'll round it down to 1. Well, I said we need to make sure we're always rounding down. This is not actually going to work. A way to guarantee that we take any number and round it down is to say math dot floor because the floor is down we're gonna round down and yes if we wanted to round up we would round up to the ceiling it would be math dot seal actually but this will create a random number a whole number and round it down based on the length of the array how many albums I've got saved two that's the Jimi Hendrix album. One, Nirvana, zero, Ramones, Hendrix, 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 Nirvana, Ramones. Okay, random, random numbers. So, cool, based on that random number, now I will display uh, one of these albums from the array. I'm going to move line 44, actually, down to line 47 because this line will do what I want based on the random number that we've created. So it's in the wrong order. I'm going to take line 44 and actually technically we can leave line 44 alone and just copy and paste it and it'll work but trust me we're going to cut line 44 uh, clean up that empty space and then enter on to line 46 and paste so the trick here is that we were specifying an index via a number. Well, now we've got a random number called rando. So instead of us passing a number, we will pass in a variable, rando, in every place that we were passing in the, str uh, the number type. So make sure you get every instance of that number and instead put in your random number variable. Let's check our results. There's Ramones. Are you experienced? Ramones? Experienced? Since we've only got three albums, it's not going to be very random. So if we had 30 albums or 300 albums, you'd be much more obvious. But with only three numbers to choose from, you're going to see the same one several times. But there's Nirvana, Jimi Hendrix, Ramones, Nirvana, Jimi, Ramones, 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 etc. But it is randomly displaying an album. Let me add one more album so that I have a fourth album to show randomly. I've got my template all set up. I'll just use it again. This will be line 38. Remember to delete the um, semicolon and replace it with a comma on line 38. New line. Alb4 equals new instance of album object. Then close the line. This time we'll say Dr. Dre album The Chronic from the year 1992 and the genre rap. I created the object but I have to add it to the array that's line 41 so comma alb4 and that's all that I need create an instance of the object and add it to the array the rest of the algorithm works just fine Twenty-four years ago. It's about to be a quarter of a century. So there you go. We are loading a random album from an array of objects. Let's uh, clean up our code and write a few comments and then we're done. So all these spots where I've got this console output, that was there for me to show that it works. And uh, perhaps I don't need it anymore so I can either comment out that line or I'm going to go ahead and delete it line 40 and again I'm just showing some basic console output on 41 and 42 I'm gonna delete those two and my random number 
I'll leave that one for the moment. I like to see that number be displayed randomly. Save and check my code just in case nothing went wrong. So it's just displaying the random number. Zero index is Nirvana. Index 2 is Hendrix. Index 1, Ramones. OK, as for comments. I'm going to add this comment that explains line 23. If he immediately invoked function expression. 24, using strict mode for JavaScript. Line 25, constructor notation for creating an object with four parameters. Lines 26 to 29 are our properties. So I'm going to write it like this, actually. I'm going to back up and say properties, because then line 31 is where my methods are. Line 33, create an object that stores today's date. Line 34, variable that holds the number of years elapsed from the release of the album. And then, of course, 35 returns the value when the method is called. Line 38, instantiate several album objects. 42, create an array and add each album object to it. Line 43, create a variable to store the div object. 44, create a random number based on length of array rounded down. And then for the final line, display all the data on screen. I'll take a quick look in the browser. No errors. Everything works just fine. So based on this exercise and your reading and understanding of the book, we will have a homework. That homework will be added to Blackboard, and it will be due in two weeks, September 26th. So be on the lookout for that and the next video.